just chuck the fact that you're born with this American passport out the window, man. It almost doesn't matter to how you get treated in this country. Instead of kind, nice, thoughtful, friendly, amicable, Andrew, you put harmless, docile, and weak in there as well. Guys, a massive Asian report has just dropped. Do we agree, disagree? If you're Asian, you're gonna wanna see this. Andrew, the status index report 2022 just dropped. Andrew, you know how dad is always like, yeah, you guys uh, talk a lot about Asian America, but where is your PhD confirmed studies? Where is your empirical evidence, Andrew, David? Well, dad, we have the data right here because 20 PhDs, a whole bunch of funding and surveying thousands of Americans has all been summed up into this report, guys. It talks about race relations, uh, how Asians are viewed in America and Asian media representation. We're going to go through it. Does it confirm or debunk some of the things that we say on this channel? I don't know. We're going to find out. All right, starting off the presentation, race relations. Are they getting better or worse in America? And guess what most Americans say? It is getting worse. Yeah, I mean, I think that this is a pretty common opinion. If you look at the media, there's so much like contentiousness from both sides, left, right, up, down. Andrew, do you think it's a situation where like there was a lot of dust swept underneath the rug for years and now the dust dust is like more visible and out from underneath the rug? Or is there just way more dust than there ever has been? Are you kind of talking about how a lot of like People on the right will say, hey, well, it's not going to be as racist if people just stop talking about racism as much. And then the left is like, no, we have to talk these things out. And then there's like that whole disagreement. But like, does talking about it make it worse? I do think the truth is, Andrew, and this is my neutral perspective, that talking about race relations is good in theory, but when people do it the wrong way and they don't couple it with step-by-step -step incremental action, it's actually worse for the whole situation. So I do understand the conservative perspective. It's like, let's just bring it back to the 90s, man. Sweep it back underneath the rug. The rug can hold a lot of dust underneath the rug. Like, you know, just for the stability of society, keep the dust under the rug. Well, you know, overall, to end off this point, I would say diversity is a beautiful thing. It's an amazing thing. It creates great products, great perspectives, but it is difficult. And sometimes I do wish that there was like this overarching power that would watch over and kind of like help smooth things out instead of letting all these like random people on the internet do it. And, or, uh, or just it random politicians that are supporting one side or the other. There literally has to be like a bilateral, like race, unity, harmonious um a uh, uh, governmental organization built up. Like, seriously, guys, I really think there has to. Point number two, it is slide 16, and it talks about people's perception of who are the most discriminated people in America. Yeah, I mean, I think quite obviously, it seems like uh, everybody's like definitely, you know, looking out for themselves in this study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I guess unsurprisingly. Yeah, if you look at it, yeah, I mean, I do think most people agree that black people are the most discriminated against for a number of reasons. That's a feeling, right? And then Asians is number two. And then Latinos in a close third. And then obviously white people at the bottom. Where Yo, people look at white people responding for themselves saying 28% think that they're discriminated against. Every other minority went with eight, nine, and 8%. <laughs> I guess, Andrew, my major takeaway is although there is some macro narratives that everybody's buying into about like white people being more privileged and black Americans being more discriminated against, I think that's pretty fair to say. Uh, definitely in the details, it seems like every group is sort of like more looking out for their own interests. And I guess that's human, right? Andrew, people see things, they see the world through like their own lens from their own tribe. All right, point number three, slide number 18. If you've ever been caught off guard that your coworkers didn't really know about Asian hate or that these Asian attacks were happening, this is why. Guys, one third of Americans are unaware that attacks against Asian Americans are increasing. David, are you shocked? All right, I think... Uh, if you would have asked me two years ago, I would have been shocked. But we live in a major coastal city under New York City where there was a ton of anti-Asian hate attacks. And I remember my friends that worked in certain non-Asian fields like high-level finance telling me that their coworkers were literally like completely unaware. I mean, let's and be honest, in not New York everybody. City, Andrew, Andrew, that's in New York yeah. City, let alone middle America. Can you imagine what if that's New York and the attacks were in New York, what the exposure levels would be to that news in like... Chicago? Yeah, no, that news was just not really penetrating uh, or making it into their like daily conversations. Unlike, obviously, if you were Asian, you were definitely talking about it. Yeah, I definitely think sometimes 
even educated Asian Americans, they work in like tech or medicine. And it's like people there are hyper educated and Asians make up like 30, 40% of those fields. So they're like, oh yeah, all my coworkers know. But it's like, yeah, of course, if an Asian Facebook employee got beat up in San Francisco, everybody at Facebook is gonna know. But what portion of the larger American public works at Facebook? And by the way, this study, Andrew, was like all of America. All right, so this next slide is about how much Asians feel accepted as part of American society. Let's look at the data. Guys, younger Asian Americans and Asian American women are less likely to feel that they belong and are accepted in US society. As you can see, the 65 and up people, they're like, yeah, I guess I feel American. You know, I'm not being called a foreigner all the time. And then the 18 to 24 year olds, this TikTok generation is like, no, I'm not part of America. Yeah, I mean, we do have to chalk some of this. And like I said, Andrew, I hate it when people like try to say we're all left or we're all right, Andrew. Some of that is due to like the wokeness, right? Yeah, and the oppression Olympics where it's like now you know all the struggles, you know all the history and you're like, hey man, like I don't feel accepted like you do. And I know that and I'm aware. Well, obviously the people of the older generation, they just had different expectations. They just didn't want to be called a uh, trank or like girl <laughs> all no, the time. No, literally, I think the people who are 65 and over, it's almost like, well, I got my paycheck and it's not like it was like half of what my like white coworker got. So yeah, regardless of whether people like me or don't like me at work, like that's acceptance enough yeah. to me. Obviously there's a different set of expectations. There's hard power, there's soft power, there's infrastructure treatment, and then there's societal treatment treatment these are like two different wavering metrics so um yeah david i would say the one shocking aspect about this though that kind of surprised me was the gender one where women feel less accepted than asian men now i think there's reasons because a survey is just like how people feel about it right but uh why why do you think maybe that is because you, usually most people would say, hey, it feels like Asian women get more accepted than Asian men in America. Yeah, I mean, I do think that to your point, Andrew, earlier about like polling, it's not fully scientific. I could see men not feeling like it's masculine to admit that they don't feel accepted. Also, I do think they could have way lower expectations. I do think, and we have uh, an Asian sister, by the way, they're more likely to almost compare themselves to what a white woman gets in the same position where it's almost like, uh, this is kind of messed up to say, Andrew, Asian guys were so far from getting what a given white guy would get in our situation that it's almost like uh that mad tv skit lowered expectations all right so number five this next point is about how overseas asians actually feel more likely they belong in america than even american-born asian americans now by the way i got to say andrew i think there is a sampling issue here because like the immigrants that like stay in a Chinatown or a Koreatown or like in a little Saigon, they probably like would not participate in a survey to be honest. But I do agree that uh, on the top end, sometimes Asians from Asia have a better sense of place and are almost more confident transitioning from their game map to the American game map. Whereas Asian Americans that are born here, there's, there's some sense of entitlement and this big chasm between what uh, our neighbors and our cul-de-sac got and what we got, and then people feel broken by that. So it's a little bit like, you know, Ronnie, Jimmy O. Yang, these guys that are like these immigrants that are almost like more expecting some barriers. So they're more willing to fight through the barriers. You know, I guess Asian Americans, sometimes when you feel entitled to something, you could give up after a barrier or two. Yeah, well, you think because we're born here, we should get treated just like any other American. And the truth is you don't. So you might as well, if you can adopt that immigrant mindset. The grateful immigrant. The grateful immigrant mindset and just go for broke because who cares? Because everybody's gonna see you as a foreigner anyway. That is true, that is true. We do get bucketed with the foreign born Asians anyway. But I mean, how do Asian Americans achieve that if that's not their organic situation? It sucks, but you gotta like, I don't know, it's tough, but like you gotta somehow adopt it. Like you gotta look at them. Like I know like watching Ronnie, uh chang you know do stand up and just go about his life like i'm like yeah it's kind of inspiring i'm like dude if as asian american guys we could adopt that grateful mindset man if we would be better off yeah, but yeah, because yeah. because just chuck the fact that you're born with this american passport out the window man it almost doesn't matter to how you get treated in this country that's what sucks that's what sucks yeah. but that's what's true i i know you you know what you're saying is true if you could just matrix download that mentality to fight through the barriers that you that truly shouldn't be there but are there you'd get further ah, okay tough. okay all right to be fair to be fair the grateful successful immigrants we're talking about are you know there's a lot obviously a lot of people back in their home country that did not make it here so like we're we're talking about the top class of hardworking, grateful uh confident immigrants in america 
All right, this next slide is about how Asian Americans view themselves more as people of color, which makes sense, but then white people view Asian Americans more like white people? What? <laughs> I mean, I guess this is a scientific study, guys. They obviously had to weigh the white perspective more because they make up of a higher population in America, much higher. You know, Asians only make up like five, six percent. Um, obviously, their 69 percent of seeing Asians similar to white people skewed the entire aggregate field to 57 percent. That's how statistics works, guys. There's like sample populations on this mathematics. I'll say this, Andrew. I would imagine if I had to analyze this from white people's perspective, they're just seeing themselves as the system or the infrastructure of America. And if Asians buy into that system or don't really hyper challenge it on any sort of visible level, I believe that's what would create this stat. If you made me guess, uh, and I think on the Asian side, we're looking at it as just like our upbringing is different. The food we eat is different. The way we talk to our parents and what, the way our parents talk to us is different and our social circles are different. So we're almost like making the read of us being POC based off that angle, whereas whites are like looking at it maybe possibly more on a machine infrastructure level. All right, so this next slide is about perceptions and stereotypes. Uh, they were asked to describe all the different groups and these are the most popular terms. Uh, look, yeah, let's look at the ones for Asians, kind, intelligent, hardworking. They all fit within the model minority umbrella. Um, I will say for white Americans, the funniest one is probably entitled privileged. Um, obviously for black Americans, oppressed was the number one word, honestly, that people were thought of. Wow. And then for Latino Americans, I'm not going to lie. This one's kind of came out of left field. Andrew Mexican just came in at 16%. That was literally the word that came to these people's minds in this study. I mean, long story short, I really think that it's difficult because these, these, these studies are like national, right? And a lot of Asians, we live our lives like along the coastline or in a major metropolitan city like Houston or a Houston suburb. Andrew, was there anything surprising about, uh, I guess, Asians fitting model minority stereotypes? I mean, uh, you know what I actually thought was interesting that the Latinos got the hardworking description number one, and then Asians hardworking is the third most popular. So I guess Asians are not perceived to be as hardworking. I don't, I mean, you know, in comparison, yeah. But uh, otherwise, no, I mean, dude, most Asians being described as model minority. I mean, it doesn't say model minority as in like, oh, they come from like good families. It just means that they're very friendly. I and I think it's because honestly, the, the crime rate for Asians is pretty low. So of course, like we kind of get the friendly card, like we're not dangerous. I got a crazy hot take. What if instead of kind, nice, thoughtful, friendendly, amicable, Andrew, you put harmless, docile, and weak in there as well? Because they didn't include those no. adjectives, but those could be euphemisms because you don't know what people are thinking in their head. It's just like in that direction. Exactly. No, I do think harmless is, is in there. So yeah, Asians being harmless is absolutely, I think it would rank in top three or at least top four. All right. So this next one is about... Uh, Asians in corporate America, and as you can look at the data, um, a lot of people feel like Asians are well represented in the corporate workplace, but actually when it comes to moving up to the executive and senior officer position, <laughs> Asians are like barely there, David. Yeah, I mean, it shows that 50% of people are like, yeah, you guys got a bunch of CEOs and like C-suite leadership people, right? And then the reality is Asians only have 6%. Obviously, that's one of the biggest complaints in the Asian American community. Even though they're like the best, most dedicated corporate workers, they don't really move up past like middle or possibly yeah. upper middle. I mean, I'd say this, Andrew. Does it feel like when, when people dedicate their lives to something, you just assume that they're doing well at the upper levels? You know how like, there were so many African-Americans in the NBA and NFL for the longest time, but there wasn't a lot of coaches or like front office people for uh, until way, way, way more recently. Um, is that something that like people would analyze, you think? Or is that just kind of like people being like, yeah, there are a lot of Asians wearing suits with the briefcases and the computers. Like, why not? Uh, I mean, I think some people are thinking about it. I know a lot of our Asian friends are thinking about it and they're always like, Hey man, like I seen this guy, uh, move up here when he probably didn't deserve it. Or, or my boss is wondering why he's not getting promoted to that level because he he's probably Asian and stuff. So I do think it's, um, I think it's going to take time, but I do think Asians are moving up because obviously Asians are in the game. They're at the company. They're at the lower middle and upper middle level. But yeah, to break through when it comes to that super top, top tier, it has been tough. And, and I do think we have to look at ourselves and ask, why do we think that is? Is there anything we can change and also how racist are they being? Because I think that's part of it too. And not only that, Andrew, I will also tell people that although it is probably definitely something structural as well as cultural, like holding us back, how hard can you really sell that oppression to other groups versus the things that they're going through? 
Like, you can't be like, yeah, well, we, you know, I worked my whole life and dedicated 115% to this company, and I never got a chance at C-suite. It's not like other people are necessarily going to feel your pain. Right, but also, and that is 100% true because I think this particular Asian issue uh, doesn't seem as serious as other issues, you know, for other people, but uh, it is systemic then. All right, so... As we are wondering why a lot of Asian Americans don't move up to the top leadership levels, David, maybe this next slide kind of explains it. Americans are the least comfortable with Asian Americans in leadership positions. Look, as a friend, 90% of America would have us, David. As a doctor or nurse, 88%. Neighbor, 88%. Coworker, 87%. A uh, member of the family, oh, they would take us as a member of the family. But as president or vice president of the U.S., of course not, or boss or supervisor, a little bit lower. So I, I guess, is this shocking? Um, no. I mean, I think that people kind of view Asians as very new to the Western Hemisphere. And I've noticed that, like, the Western Hemisphere, they have their own ranking of, like, different things. And once Asians got introduced in the mix in, like, heavy volume in 1970, it kind of got real crazy because some people are like, yeah, well, just don't mess with our Western ranking that we had going on. I'm just going to put you guys in a separate category. But some of the Asians, they want in on the current ranking. Some of them are okay being in like an auxiliary silo, like two ladders next to each other. It, it's just very different. But yes, I don't think a lot of people are used to taking orders from an Asian. All right. And this next slide kind of explains why there's not as many Asians moving up to C-suite level or moving up to those executive roles as much as you might think. Boom. Listen. 90% of us would have us as a friend. 88 would have us as a doctor, as a coworker, as a member of the family. But when it gets to boss, you see a slight drop off. Actually, member of the family and, and boss is actually at the same level. And then obviously, a lot of people don't want us as president. And you got to think, president. these are surveys too, where it's like people are just being, trying to be nice. Like, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this actual number for vice president is like way lower. It's probably like 52%. Um, but like, uh, obviously, you know, as a doctor or nurse, that, that should be like 98%. Um, I'll say this, man, people view us as like, I guess, aliens to the Western hemisphere. And maybe some Asians, we don't necessarily do the best job of adopting Western subcultures to like ease those fears. Not that we should either, because that seems like a weird thing to have to think about. Everybody's like at ease with us or not, or our assimilation to subcultures. But uh, yeah, I mean, we're new to the Western hemisphere uh, prior to 1970 um, in terms of very, very large numbers. All right. This next slide is a asking different political parties uh, if they feel like Asians benefit the country. And it's kind of interesting. Boom. Everybody agrees that Asians do contribute and work hard in this country. But surprisingly, David, Democrats a little <laughs> bit lower than the Republicans. What is going on here? Oh, man. You would think it would theoretically be the other way around. But these are 2022 stats. Who knows what it was in 1975? I could see that being flipped. But um, yeah, I would say if you made me look at this, I'd say 75% of Republicans, I guess in a weird way, saying Asians contribute and 71% of Democrats. Democrats tend to be more like social issue or like culturally centric whereas i would say republicans theoretically might be more capitalistic that's just what i'm thinking all right so david this next slide is uh, a pretty serious one and it's probably one of the most hurtful and surprising slides there was a big jump from year to year compared to 2021 americans in 2022 are more likely to question the loyalty of asian americans it's a 13 percent jump that is gigantic <laughs> kind bro of, is the is the uh, the volume kind of hilarious just the amount that Dude, it was. the uh, the 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 jump between it is crazy so obviously you know you can't I, I, you have to look at you know, uh, COVID started in China, obviously the whole perception of that, the whole TikTok controversy, the whole spying thing, the whole fact that we're in a cold war, and not only trade that, wars, the everything. fact that all Asians to me are Chinese. I mean, I think it also creates more internal divisions within Asians, to be honest, because some Asians are going to blame the Chinese for like making all Asians look bad because they're yeah. going to be like, but uh, everybody sees us as the same thing. So now you're causing everybody to look bad. I don't like that. Um, yeah, no, I mean, it, it's not a good feeling to have, to be honest. I mean, I know we're joking about it, but seriously, like, I don't know. I, I don't want to say it's directly tied to, like, Asian hate and, like, punching random people. But, yeah, it's true that if the overall narrative is to distrust Asian Americans, then if you see them on the street and you're a crazy person, you, you just envision that person as a, 
a person you can't trust. Yeah, so, I don't I mean, know. It's tough. Man, it's tough. I, I, honestly, I hope that the next year in 2023, it's not another 13% jump, but I might estimate it to be at like 4 to 5%. I think it'll get better. I think it'll get better. But, but it might get worse before it gets better. I don't it, know. It, no, it might get like just only a little bit worse, and then it might get better. So uh, we'll see, you know. And I think that it's also too, like people seeing the negative economic ramifications. Uh, I know there's a lot of studies out there that anytime the economics is in a downturn or recession, people feel worse about everything. Oh yeah, people are looking for somebody to blame a lot. You know, when times are good, you're like, I don't know, times are good, I'm not even thinking about it. Times are bad, you're like, holy shit, Let me who start is picking, at fault? Let me start picking Who's everybody at fault? apart. You know what, uh, you know, I don't know Americans are at fault, it's China. and. Um, like I said, there, there's reasons for it, of course. We are in a geopolitical thing. So anyways, moving on. All right, switching gears. This is the big Asian representation slide. People were asked, can they name a famous Asian? And of course, Andrew, the, uh, coming in at 58% was the most famous Asian American actor, Don No, NGO is his last name. That's, he's Chinese Vietnamese. Bro, I'm not even gonna lie. That red bubble was so big. I didn't even think it was part of the other data. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really surprise me. I think a lot of people are going to be like, what about BTS? What about Shang-Chi and Simu? And what about uh, Michelle Yao? She just had the big A24 movie, everything, everywhere, all at once. And I'm saying, listen, guys, this study is like for all of America. We're talking about NHL, NASCAR, MLB, Shohei Otani's not even on here. So it's just like, you can't live only in your fishbowl of society. America's like very hyper diverse. So it's made up of a ton of fishbowls, right? Middle America, coastal, Southern, whatever, like geek world, mainstream world. So I think that this is uh, a tough pill to swallow, right? For aggregate America, Andrew, we're talking about like Miley Cyrus, like Gwyneth Paltrow, you know what I mean? Like friends, TV show America. This is probably true. Yo, is it kind of crazy? Like, does anything surprise you that like when they were asked to name a prominent Asian, some people put just Kim Jong-un as the first one. <laughs> And then actually Aquafina made some waves at 2% along Yo, with Andrew Aquafina, Yang. Aquafina, shout out to her coming in at 2%. Yeah, shout out Aquafina. And then uh, uh, what else is kind of funny? Uh, 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 Jet Li, Jeremy Lin still on there, Sandra Oh, Tiger Woods. Now, yeah. Andrew, the reason Tiger that Chan. I'm not shocked is because uh, a couple years ago, me and you made this very viral MOS on Hollywood Boulevard in um, Hollywood, California, LA, obviously, where all the movies are made and, you know, Mountain's Chinese Theater is. And people really didn't know anybody other than Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee. No, I mean, I would say- And this is when Jeremy Lin was like still at his peak almost. Exactly, exactly. So guys, at the end of the day, uh, listen, a lot of people are not tapped into who a prominent Asian is. And even if they see the face, even if they recognize the face, they might not know the and, name. Andrew, hold on, hold on, are you telling me? that a lot of people like in a macro big picture sense in America do not subscribe to Next Shark and Jackfruit. All right, so this next slide is comparing Asian female roles in Hollywood and in media, comparing it to Asian men. Let's look at the Asian female roles and how they're perceived real quick, okay? Interestingly, Kung Fu martial arts experts still came in at number one. It's still number one, man. And then Geisha, sex worker, sex prostitute, worker prostitute stripper. stripper. Oh yeah, um, I guess. And then number 10, 10 is, I don't know. <laughs> And then uh, janitor, maid, supporting roles, doctor, submissive, mom, wife, spouse. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, David, do any of these shock you? Uh, no. no, they don't. I mean, these are the roles that are written in Hollywood, but obviously some people like, this is a poll, so it's not necessarily scientific to analyzing every piece of mainstream media that came out. But I would say, like, for example, in everything, all everywhere, all at once, Andrew Michelle Yo was a kung fu martial arts expert. She was a janitor made cleaner because she ran the cleaners. She was also a mom, a tiger mom that had obviously the strained relationship with her daughter. And she was sexy, hot, beautiful, kind of MILF status. So, you know, you're just stacking the way people perceive you to make a hit movie. Hey, stack the layers. All right, let's move on to how the guys are perceived. I guess I don't think that this is going to surprise us either, David. Um, similarly, Americans primarily see Asian American men in stereotypical and negative roles. All right, first 29%. Kung Fu Masters, yes, we are oftentimes Kung Fu Yo, Masters. Yo, that's crazy, 29%. Uh, oh, 17% the criminal and gang drug dealers and villains. Yeah, you get the triad, Yakuza, like yeah. AZN thug thing a uh, little bit. Things that are different than the women, I would say is the executive business people role and uh, nerdy, nerdy, smart, intelligent guys. Yeah, yeah, I would say that like, if we were to actually analyze all the roles given to 
Asian American men in uh, mainstream, the nerdy nerd guy would like be way, way higher than what the uh, survey says. And you know what's actually interesting about the Kung Fu master and the criminal gang? I think when Asians are depicted as gangs in most movies, it's usually taking place in Asia like triads, Yakuza, right? Asian gangs. There's not as many Asian American gangs being depicted in movies, right? And then also a lot of Kung Fu artists are oftentimes from Asia too. So you would say the two largest roles here are probably majority done in a in Asia perspective. Or it could be like Lethal Weapon 4, Andrew, where Jet Li was a martial arts triad gangster from Asia who came over to America. Yes, yes, there's that too. But what I'm saying is that probably these characters are actually born in Asia. These are actually not American-born Asian men, most of these roles. Yeah, except the uh, doctor and possibly the nerdy nerd or funny witty comedic relief. All right, our next slide. People were asked, hey, would you like to see more Asians in lead roles? You asked people in a survey this. What do you think they're going to say? Uh, well, Asians said at 88%, which is funny. That's very Asian, 88. But Yo, uh, who was the 12% that said no? Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. I think that's like Asians not wanting to say it or... You know, a lot of Asian Americans, they try to like be like, oh, that stuff's not important, you know. Um, but yeah, Asian Americans coming in at 88. White Americans at the lowest. Yo, white people do not really want to see us. Well, here's the thing. White people, you know, they're kind of the system runners. And they're the ones that dominate the industry, right? So if they say they don't want to see Asians, guess what? There's not going to be a lot of Asians. Yeah. And I'll see. Well, they white tend to have, you're saying the power weight ratio kind of like skews the overall impact yeah, because it is true and it, it sucks in America that if white people don't want to see your face, then it does, it's going to impact your career. I don't um, want to see your face. So, uh, but yeah, oh, mostly everybody said that they were like, yeah, I'll be down. I'll go see an Asian, see what they got. You uh, but know? shout out to 18 and 24 year olds, you know, being more open minded because that's obviously where society is headed. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. Well, I guess that would kind of explain the surge of Asian material there are more asian leads now than ever obviously oh. there's also more content now than ever so yeah but there are more asian leads particularly for content that caters to a younger demographic precisely all right last but not least different americans were asked hey how did you learn about asians or how do you see asians or how are you exposed to asians and boom this is the results. Okay, Asians learn about Asians through family, social media, friends, news, and TV and music. News way down there. Yeah, I guess. Possibly because the news doesn't really cover Asians much unless yeah. it's a geopolitical macro sense. Uh, um, number two, Andrew, black Americans, they learn from news and then TV music. And then white people, same news and TV music. And then Latinos came through number one as social media. Hey, Latinos are on social media learning about Asians. All right, all right. I, I don't really know what that means. I can't even like infer anything, but anyways, basically David, uh, it makes sense, right? What I notice about Asian Americans is still a lot of them really know what their family knows. Like a lot of Asian Americans, like knowledge base is heavily, heavily impacted by who is their mother, their father, their brothers, their sisters, their uncles, and their aunties. And uh, that's good and that's bad, right? I would say a lot of Asians are generally, and by the way, guys, this is not all, kind of disengaged from the larger American discourse. I mean, like that's kind of a big statement, but it's facts. Yeah, I mean, I think after a certain age, depending on your career, uh, your interest in learning more about Asian stuff kind of goes down because you're just trying to make it in America. You're just trying to adapt. You want to move up the corporate ladder or move up in your job, whatever that job is. And it might not involve learning more about Asian history. Are, are you talking about, Andrew, managing the micro fish bowls of life? Yeah, because you're in America and learning more about Asians in America for 95% of Asians probably doesn't directly help them. I think it can help their being. It can help them uh, understand themselves and understand their identity. But yes, un in, as far as making more money, maybe maybe not as much. Right. Um, and as far as black Americans and white Americans really getting everything from news, TVs, and music doesn't really surprise me. They've been in America, obviously, the longest. And then Latinos, hey, apparently, Andrew, anything Latinos know about Asians is from TikTok. I'm just <laughs> kidding, guys. I, I'm just... All right, you guys, at the end of the study, our last slide, number 43, it shows that many people recommended that education is the preferred solution to fight anti-Asian American racism. I mean, I think that's pretty easy answer to give in a survey that sounds like 
super yeah like education it'll just be like the thing that all bonds us i mean i don't you know disagree with that but definitely i think that's just like one of the fingers on a hand um because there's other fingers that are important too and andrew what is your major recommendation i would say asians just gotta like learn more about being asian and learn more about western culture instead of just letting it organically happen i'd like to see a more concerted effort to learn about both cultures eastern and western mm -hmm. yeah i think a lot of asian americans uh need to kind of up their confidence. I know that everybody hears this phrase, but what I mean by confidence is I mean by like courage or boldness in America because America is no, not- No, 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 because don't, don't just say confidence, Andrew, because yeah. a lot of Asians are confident yeah, yeah, yeah. in their ability to like do their job properly. I'm talking about outward boldness, you know, something where it allows you to feel like you can speak up and it makes you feel like you want to work out or learn a martial art or, or go out and do things because just a lot of people do not know what Asians are in America still, you know, wow. and this whole report kind of tells you like they, they don't know that much. They can't name any prominent Asians. They still view Asians as these and these roles. So I'm just saying like, uh, whatever it takes to be more bold and courageous, I think those are the things that we need to work on as Asians. And I'll add to that, Andrew, one caveat. Like, I don't think that Asians need to feel bad that people don't perceive us as bold and courageous. We just have to understand that we went from like the, you know, East game map that like runs by its own metrics and maybe boldness or courageousness, too much of it can like look bad. But in America, it's almost like a one-to-one, -one, just the more bold and courageous you are, just the more you get. Yes. You know what I mean? Like exactly. it's a different system. Like over there, I could see it being pros and cons. And then the, the pros and cons are almost equal in the East. But in the West, there's way more pros than cons to being bold and courageous in an outward sense. America is that type of country that if you are bold, courageous, and have something to contribute, which Asians do have a lot to contribute, you will find a significant increase of success and respect. Will you be at the top? I don't know. I can't say so. But you're gonna see an improvement jump and we're not always gonna be viewed in these roles. Uh, we're not always gonna be like, it's not always gonna be that nobody knows anything about us. Things will get better, but I do think as an individual, that's what we can work on. Well, Andrew, what would you say to somebody who's like more living in an Asian, I guess all Asian fishbowl where they're like, dude, that's why I like choose to not care about anything that's in this study. Because like, even though this is true, that's why I just like live my life in the boba world. Well, I'll tell you this, man, that person definitely did not make it this far in that in this video. So I really don't have anything to address to them, man, because they're not watching. But uh, no, yeah. no, no, that is a that, that is a possible option that you can choose, though. Right? Of course. Yeah, of course you can bow out of the game. I don't know. I mean, I guess if your life is good, but if you're trying to help each other and trying to be a little drop in the bucket of this big wave that can help us all and help the world too, like, you know, then you got to think about it. But yeah, maybe just live your life. Maybe you're a cool person and, and you like the way your life is. I don't know. Can't say much. Hey, like we said, guys, we're just here to break it down like an umpire call the balls and the strikes, and then you guys make your own decisions. Let us know what in the comment section below. One, did you read the status, you know, report for 2022 about Asian Americans? Do you agree or disagree with our takeaways? What are your takeaways? Until next time, we the Hot Pop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.